So as some of you may know, I've been playing a lot of Dark Souls lately. I love it and I hate it at the same time. It's amazing. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, the whole premise of Dark Souls is that if you die, all of your experience is lost unless you can reach the exact spot where you died. If you can't, then you've lost absolutely everything. And this punishing mechanic is what made it very famous, and it also is what makes it really rewarding because you worked for everything you have in that game. With that in mind, there's this really famous exploit in the Darkroot Forest where you can basically make people run off a cliff and you get free souls and you could probably get a hundred thousand in what, like 20 minutes or so? It's ridiculous. Take a look. All right, we have our obligatory praise the sun before we go off into the dark forest. And basically I'm going to aggro everyone I can find. I killed the sorcerer first because he was being annoying and would not jump off the cliff. And that is simply unacceptable. And there is one guy two guy and we're back that was very fast it was almost like we time skipped or something now let's situate ourselves right here there comes one and ooh, that is too bad and where's the second guy oh there he is now i don't know about you but that seems a little bit too easy for dark souls several of these exploits in dark souls are due to the limitations of the ai's pathfinding which is the way something figures out the shortest path from point A to point B. Pathfinding can be used for enemy AI in games like Dark Souls, or a computer solving a maze, or even in areas like financial trading and system networking. Before we talk about pathfinding, let's talk about graphs. These graphs are not the kind with an X and Y axis, but a representation of how things are connected. And we show this through a collection of nodes and edges. A directed graph, for example, shows how we can travel from node to node, but we can only go in the direction the arrow is pointing. An undirected graph means that if an edge connects two nodes, you can go in any direction. Now, how do we find the shortest path in a graph? Well, let's think about it together. So we have this graph and we want to think of an algorithm to find the shortest path from A to B. Remember, an algorithm is just a set of instructions. So the most obvious set of instructions I could think of to find the shortest path is just try every path and pick the shortest one. It seems obvious, right? And so if we compare here, we have 11 or eight, and obviously eight is shorter, so that's correct, right? Well, let's think about it. Imagine we have to find the shortest path between 50 nodes or 100 or maybe 1,000. Finding each individual path is going to take a long time, especially if we have to do it 30 to 60 times per second. Instead, we can use Dijkstra's algorithm, which, while more complicated for us, the programmers, to understand, is much more faster than our previous approach. And that's something that's really important to keep in mind. As a developer, the easy solution is not always the best performing solution, and performance is a huge issue in game development. Now, you can see Dijkstra's algorithm in action right here, and the reason why it's faster than the other one is because it looks through the entire graph once, each node is only touched once, and then it's done. It's found the shortest path. Our other one, we had to keep grabbing each individual path, which you imagine on a larger graph would require us to look at the entire graph many more times than just once. You can see this very algorithm in all sorts of games, but it's easiest to show it in Civ because Civ is literally a grid of hexes that are nodes. And if two hexes share an edge, you could say they're connected. And so you can see how it's calculating the path for the unit based on the number of turns it takes for the movement. And you could say the terrain acts as weight for each of the edges. Many games in practice use an A star algorithm, which is similar to Dijkstra's, but made faster by using some approximations rather than exploring the entire graph. However, many 3D games like Dark Souls are not perfect grids. Graphics are defined by lots of small triangles put together to make a 3D object. This is called a mesh. Similarly, in order to create dynamic pathing routes, Triangular nav meshes are used for AI to know which nodes to step on, uh, similar to a graph. Now, I don't know if this is precisely how Dark Souls does it, but this is the general idea of how it works in most games. When an AI is running at you, it is calculating the shortest path based on some invisible triangular path 
that defines the region. You also have the added dimension of height. The fastest way to get from point A to point B might require dropping off a ledge or running upstairs, or as you can see in this clip, they might not be so aware of the dimension of height and just keep trying to run at you. So let's take another look at our forest exploit. My guess is that while the ledge by the stairs is technically walkable by the player, that thin strip is not included within the nav mesh that the AI is using to calculate their path. However, the stairs next to you are valid places that they can go to. So while they're calculating their path, they run up the stairs and they see that the absolute distance between them at the top of the stairs and you on the ledge is close enough that they should attack. And in the process of that, they run off the edge and end up falling down the cliff. You can see this and abuse this in Dark Souls and many other games, and it really helps to understand how the AI works to understand how to abuse it. So that's how pathfinding works, and enjoy your soul farming. Thanks so much for watching. While we're on the topic of pathfinding, I want to talk about the swarm AI in StarCraft 2. So you can see I have some zerglings all moving around as one entity. And notice when they face obstacles, they alter their path slightly to move around one another, but they still get to the same point at just about the same time. This is in contrast to Brood Wars, which is a little bit more primitive. Each unit would have its own A-star algorithm and calculate its own shortest path. If it faced an obstacle or perhaps another unit in its way, it would wait until that unit passed and then continue with its own path. This made units in Brood War a little bit closer together and a little bit slower. In contrast, the unit groups in StarCraft II are a little bit more spread out, and so it's easier to surround units and buildings. You can see how understanding the underlying algorithms could actually make a huge difference in pro levels of play. So there you go. That's a little bit about how pathfinding works in games. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you want more, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, give me any feedback you have. I'll see you guys next time.